You're listening to the sounds of Salford from the UK going out to the world. The years following the punk rock explosion of the mid 1970s rank amongst the most fascinating in British rock music. It was a time when the energies unleashed by punk rock collided with a sense of hopelessness as the country drifted in the recession. As the 70s ended, the UK was plagued by strikes, power cuts and racism, raised its ugly head in the form of the National Front, who sought to indoctrinate British youth to their cause. People were very divided at the time. There was a, you know, you were very conscious about what colour you were. A bunch of multiracial musicians from the Midlands came together to form the two-tone label, taking their inspiration from a form of music popular with Caribbean immigrants, ska. Two-tone was a conscious creation rather than an organic explosion. It was founded by specials keyboard player Jerry Dammers, who believed that by using ska, which traditionally had a skinhead audience, he could preach an anti-racist message to them. They wrote about a recognisable world that the people who listened to that music lived in. And so for a couple of years, it was the hottest thing you could imagine in British music. Jerry was a poet of that generation. His lyrics were perfect. By the time of the special's first single, Gangsters, it was already a definable brand. But it was more than just a label, it was a movement, and was to spawn great bands like The Beat, The Selector, and Madness. On my radio by The Selector was a bare-faced assault on the Adonine radio of the day. All DJs heard was the word on my radio. They didn't hear the bit, same old show on my radio, which is what it was saying, which was, what it was attacking. The music itself was special having a political edge apparent within the lyrics and in the cover versions the bands chose. A live EP by the specials in 1980 was to seal their success. The lead track, Too Much Too Young, became an anthem, a scar hymn to a wasted youth. This was pure anger, but wrapped up in bubblegum. We were in the depths of a recession, interest rates were high and firms were going bankrupt. But we were being attacked at other levels. Terrorism from the Middle East had reached our shores, and the West was still embroiled in the Cold War. It got right to the point where one mistake, and there wouldn't be a humanity left. What is, what is nuclear attack? The specials were very vocal about where they stood on the subject too. There was a genuine fear that we would all be wiped off the face of the earth. Between 79 and 82, there were a succession of assassination attempts. Reagan was shot, so was the Pope. The Queen was threatened. President Sadat of Egypt was killed, and John Lennon was murdered in cold blood. There was also an atmosphere of fear. The IRA had begun a mainland bombing campaign, and no one knew where they'd strike next. The most frightening thing that was going on at that point was the IRA. Coventry was bombed, and literally, you know, the, the stylus came off the record. During this period, the terrorists would target politicians, civilians and even royalty. In an atmosphere of hostility towards outsiders, some felt suspicion became an excuse for intimidation. And with ever-growing discontent throughout the nation, what was to come next was inevitable. They swamped Brixton with police, they kept stopping young black men. If you were a black kid at the time and you weren't stopped, you, you hadn't lived. Poverty, racism, militarism. The fighters on the front lines could pick their targets as easily as they picked up a brick. Ghost Town was a haunting lament for a city, a country, a lifestyle that was threatened by poverty, unemployment and strife. There was growing discontent with the government for getting things so wrong. But within a few weeks, the nation's eyes were deflected towards other matters. Britain was to find itself once again at war. But hope was never lost, and no matter how hopeless a cause seemed, the will was found to fight it. The hits soon dried up for the two-tone label. But before two-tone was to end, it came full circle. It now focused its attention on the racism of the National Party of South Africa. The special AKA were to release a song that became a rallying cry for freedom around the world. We should remember it as a time when music not only took on the major issues of the day, but also had a role to play in shaping our understanding of them. Free Nelson Mandela. 
You're listening to the sounds of Salford from the UK going out to the world. 